Luxury Designs. It's Tuesday night and we are live. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. I want to ask a favor of everybody that's joining in tonight. I want you to promise me that for the next, oh, 30, 45 minutes that you're going to take a deep breath and relax, forget everything that's going on in this crazy world right now, and let's just have a good time and let's make something pretty. So tonight, what we're gonna do is my version of uh, a tortoiseshell type of a finish. But, like always, we're gonna experiment and we're gonna add some crazy colors and see what we can come up with. I have no idea what it's gonna turn out like, I've never done this before with some of the colors, but we're gonna have a good time tonight. So enjoy and uh, relax. So for all of, the, all of you that are joining us for the first time, do me a favor, let me know where you're joining in from. I am blown away when I go and read the comments uh, after the live is posted from where everybody's joining us. And it humbles me like you cannot even believe to know that you guys are taking a little bit of time out of your busy schedule, your life, to spend some time with Kenny and I. So we want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart. All right, so big shout out for my moderators. Now I know, oh I don't know, but I don't think that Eric is with us tonight. She is getting to see her brand new baby niece. So everybody welcome uh, the uh, Erica's little baby uh, into the world. So she, we're really happy for her, uh, for her and her little uh, niece. Uh, also, so uh, Clara and Vamp, I believe they're both on. So guys, you don't really realize what it takes out of their day to come help me out. And I really do appreciate it. So they keep everybody on the up and up and on the straight and narrow. They make sure we don't have any trolls or anything uh, jumping into our feed. Also, they're always quick to answer questions and they are very accomplished artists in the resin world and they know their stuff. So whatever they say, I agree with. All right, guys, so let's get started. So what I've done is I've measured out my board and um, I've poured 14 ounces of Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat. And the reason I'm using Art Coat is because I'm out of the regular epoxy. And most of the time, honestly, I use the uh, Art Coat because of the higher uh, amounts of the UV protection. And I just know that my bases are covered. We're going three ounces per square foot on this piece. And we're gonna do kind of a melded type of a marble. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I, I uh, split up my cups and we're gonna start off by mixing some dyes first. We're gonna start off with our black opaque dye and I didn't wear my glasses, so this might be fun. So the black opaque dye that I really like to use is the Alumilite black dye. Now, Erica from Artist Till Death, she also, has black uh, pigments on her site. Uh, Color Obsession, I believe, has a really good black that I like to use. Um, I guess I'm out of this one. And any of those will work, but you wanna make sure it's a non-metallic black dye. And with the Alumilite dyes, a little bit will go a very, very long way. And you wanna make sure that you really tint very opaquely. You don't wanna be able to see through that dye. All right, so that's our first cup. This is our black dye cup. Then we're gonna do brown dye. And one of my very favorite brown dyes anywhere is the Alumilite brown dye. I really like it, because I'm gonna show you what you can do. You can, if you want to make a very transparent brown, oops, I need a stick. You can take and just put one drop of that brown 
and you saw how little amount I put in there. And you can make a very translucent brown, a very pretty, almost kind of a, I don't even know what you would call that color, caramel maybe color. And it's very, very transparent. But if you add just a couple of more drops, you can really deepen up that color. And it's just an absolute gorgeous color. And like I said, it is one of my very, very, very favorite browns. All right, so we have black and we have brown. Now we're gonna do a mixture of both of them. So I, I tend to do a little more brown than the black because the black will really take over very quickly. So I'll tint it brown first. You know what I'm gonna do? I really like the deepness of this brown. So I'm gonna throw an audible in here. I really like this deepness of the brown that I got here. This is a little more transparent. So I'm gonna confuse y'all. Instead of adding the black to this cup that says <laughs> black brown, I'm gonna add it to the brown, brown cup. But you know what I'm doing. But I'm only gonna add one little drop. Watch how little of that almost messed up. It's been it's been a day, y'all. I'm gonna add one, watch, one drop of that black. One more drop. <laughs> See, this is how I cook, y'all. I just kind of say, eh, one, maybe two, maybe six. All right, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this on camera, but that is a espresso brown. Holy cow, makes me wanna have a cup of coffee. This is just the brown. All right, I can kinda almost see through it a little bit. Okay, so we got that situated. All right, so I've painted our substrate black. Now, what I'm gonna do is like we do usually, I'm gonna split this board up, okay? So this is gonna be, um, let's call this my, I guess camera, I don't guess camera left, or anyway, it's my right, it's gonna be side A, okay? And this is gonna be side B. So side A, we're only gonna put dark bronze metallic mica powder from Stone Cold Countertop, okay? On side B, we're gonna put some copper metallic powder and we're gonna patina it up a little bit and we're gonna put some rainforest green. So, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna just randomly, very random, we're gonna lay down all of our browns and it doesn't matter which one you start off with but you want to make sure that you don't lay it in any sort you know what i'm going to save that in a cup i'm not going to use it all um don't go in a pattern all right so that happened to be our brown this is our black just the solid black and i know guys it's going to be really hard for you to, to distinguish on camera what we're doing but take my word for it we did it in class this past weekend and it is absolutely gorgeous I did do a live on Facebook during the class and I showed some uh, sample boards that the students were doing and let me tell you something they turned out absolutely gorgeous all right. Okay, so I've got all my browns. So let's take it, take a brush. You could also uh, take a roller if you wanted to. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit. It's a little bit cool in our shop tonight. Um, we had a front blow in. Now I know all you people up north think us Texas people are pansies because it's in the 40s here 
and I'm about to hibernate. I don't do well in cold weather. So it is a little bit cold in here. It's probably <laughs> it's probably 70 degrees and that's cold for me. So anyway, y'all can laugh. I don't care. Y'all can laugh. So y'all tell me what y'all's temperature is right now outside y'all's house. And then y'all can all be jealous that tomorrow it'll probably be 70 degrees in Texas. Okay, now, you really, in this light, you cannot tell that we have melded colors, but you can, it's definitely different colors. Now, what you have to be really careful with doing this is that you don't over meld or you'll make one color. But maybe we'll be able to, uh, after, the, after we do our finish, we can move some lights around and you guys can maybe see the different colors. Um, okay, so on our side A, we're gonna bring in our dark bronze. And I'm not gonna add all of it right now, okay? And then on, ooh, I busted my cup, yikes. On side B, we're gonna do just the copper. Everybody say hi to Kenny too, because he's just sitting back there nice and quiet. Um, okay, so this, I'm now I'm gonna add, you know what, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait to add my green. All right, so now I'm gonna take it and very softly, I'm gonna meld my bronze. If, is Keith out there, McGinnis? I don't know if he's on here or not, but Keith can attest, because he was at our last pro class that we did, he can attest to how absolutely stunning this finish is. It is ju it's just gorgeous. All right. I'm just going to kind of sl slowly bring in just a little bit. We're going to have like a little transition here. All right, so now let's come in with the copper. Now you'll notice I'm almost just kind of skip trialing that brush over the edges, I mean over the surface. Wow, that's pretty. Oops, got a hair. All right. So, just this by itself is, can be a what? What can this be right here? Somebody know what this can be right here or this can be right here? First one wins a prize. Keith. Keith McGinnis. Keith, you know. You know exactly what I'm going to say. These could be a finish all on its own. Now, I am tilting because I do have the ability to tilt this. Uh, if you're doing a pour in place, obviously, you won't have that ability. But this is a finish that you have to let set up for a little bit and let that mica powder and those dyes kind of fight each other. Because all by itself, Kenny, can you, can you kind of zoom in here? Look at the definition, look at this. This is just blows my mind. I absolutely love it. I love the colors that the mica powders make when they mix with those brown and those black dyes. You know what, if I get your phone and put a light, you think it would help? No? Okay. I'm, I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if it helps to put it up or not. But it is beautiful. I just, I just love the different depths that you get. 
Can they see it? Is it not very good? Yeah. It is so, 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 so pretty, guys. You don't think your phone, your, your light will help on your phone? My phone's right there. There's another phone back there. Can you put the light on it? You can try it. Okay, I'm going to go get this phone, guys, and I'm going to try to put a light on, the, on it to see if I can show you guys how pretty this looks. I don't know what your passcode is. Kenny has me locked out of his out of his phone. All right, so the longer we let it kind of set, it's making all of these beautiful. Can y'all see now? See how the browns just mix with that dark bronze and just give an absolute gorgeous. Now, even if you come over here where you barely drag that brush and you barely bring those micas, there's such depth. If you're trying to do maybe a dark, dark finish and you just want a hint, look at just how just barely dragging that brush over just that dark area. Now, come and look at the coppers. Look at the de the just the designs that you're getting in that copper. I got a little surface tension right there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now we're going to add a little bit of the green. And we're going to try to get a patina on here. All right. All right. So now we're going to come in with the rainforest green. And I don't want to get crazy with that green. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. And we'll start to kind of drag that. Maybe a little bit more here. See what happens if we chop it. Let's chop that. Kind of bring it in. So the chopping really does make a pretty finish as well. Look at the design that you get with the chopping. I'm gonna. Then what I would probably do is come back in here and just like almost drag my brush over the top of it. So that you get a really neat design. And I'm going to tilt this just a bit. Maybe you guys can see it. Can y'all see that? How the green starts to give almost a little patina look. That is really pretty. I love, I, I really like, so let's have this, let's do this guys. Let's say this is a the bronze, let's say B is my copper. And then let me know if you like the copper before I put the green in it or not. And then I'm gonna call this little section here, section C. Because honestly, that section is so pretty because it barely has any color in it from the mica powders. And you can really see the black in the background. Let me get the, the phone again. What is it? So I'm really liking, I, this is almost my favorite is the dark. All right, I'll get this light again and see if I can, look at that green, look. Oh, look, so pretty. Just a hint of that green in there. Gorgeous. What do y'all think about that? Y'all like that? Leave me a comment. Let me know if you guys like the green or not. Or maybe what color would you use? What color would you use to mix in there? Now I'm still, I'm not gonna touch this over here, guys. Not right now, at least. I want you to, you got this is the bronze. Look at that. 
So I am loving it. I'm loving how that bronze metallic is starting to kind of just flatten out and sink a little bit into the dies. Wow. And look at this. So pretty. All righty. Now, y'all gonna probably kill me because now what I wanna do, I can't turn this damn light off. Oop, darn, sure, I said darn, sorry. Turn that light off. Um, now what I wanna do, and this is what I had one of my students do in class, is they had, they had, they really weren't happy with their, with their finish because they had put a little bit too much mica powder on there. So they wanted to kind of fix it. So I'm gonna, oh goodness, this paint can won't shake. Sorry guys, I'm trying to. So what we did is we came in with some black spray paint because you know, black spray paint fixes everything. So I'm going to go just, you didn't clean your brush. no, I did not clean my brush. I, I literally went from here to here and then jumped in with the green. I never, I never cleaned the brush. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to split part B in half. We're going to have all, the whole alphabet here before you know it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just come over, hang on, let me grab some copper. I'm going to come over the top with some black spray paint. Hang on a second. Yeah. Okay, now it's not super opaque. I can still see a little bit down to that finish. And now I'm going to come in with some copper mica mixed with isopropyl alcohol and I'm going to fracture that and I'm also going to kind of come over here and do a few drips I'm still not going to touch the other side I'm going to leave it alone now I'm going to re-chop it okay And I'm going to kind of let it do its thing. Let all that alcohol melt. And then we're going to kind of let it, this do its thing as well. Why does it feel so dark in here today? All right. So I'm kind of liking this as well. Kind of causing. So what do y'all want me to do? Do you guys want me to do anything to side A? Or do you want me to leave it alone so at the end of the live you guys can see what it looks like? Let me know. Let me know what you want me to do. I am going to add a little bit. I am seem to be a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more epoxy down on this one side because I seem to be lacking a little bit. So I just came back and added a little bit of the brown mixture and a little bit of the black mixture just because I didn't I don't feel like I had enough on on there I'm having a hard time even seeing this myself I'm even gonna add a little bit more black black spray paint when all else fails chop in some black spray paint there we go now we're getting some contrast Mm, let me see, do I have clear? Probably just made some mud here, but that's okay. Making mud's fun. All right, so it is starting to fracture. All those micas are starting to pop back up. So we'll kind of let that be on its own. Now, I do like this. I think that's kind of cool too. See how the where I did the drips with the copper mica, it's kind of giving a little different look as well. 
And if I would have waited, well, it's been about 20 minutes, um, then these patterns are going to stay a little more distinct than if I would have put the alcohol on that surface immediately after I poured it. So the longer that you wait to add your mica alcohol mixture, the, the more distinct your pattern is going to stay. So, yeah, so I'm starting to like this a little bit better. It's very rich. Let me see if I can get that. Where's your phone again, Ken? Ni? Ken ni? <laughs> yeah, so show them that. Now you can start seeing how those coppers and that green is coming out, and every so often you've got some webbing. I really do like that. That's a really pretty unusual, like if you wanted a kind of a granite effect, this would be really pretty because I know guys, you guys aren't seeing it up close and personal, but this, there's some, so much depth in there and it is beautiful. Just a little bit of that fracturing. All right, so we're on oh, surface tension. If you guys get surface tension like that from alcohol, just tap it and it'll close back up. All right, so let's recap here a little bit. Let's go to side A, which was our original recipe. And I got a I got a little brush hair in there, but I'm not going to touch it. I'll get it out later on. I don't, I don't have to get, grab a pair of tweezers. So this is the original. The dyes with just the mica powder. And look how this pattern has moved. It is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I said I wasn't going to touch it, but I'm going to touch a little bit of this corner. I'm going to show you what happens when you put just plain alcohol. I'm going to put it on my fingers. And I'm just going to flip it a little bit. Well, you flipped it all over every time. Well, I did, didn't I? Oh, well. Use your imagination. Let's pretend I didn't do it over this. <laughs> but look at just by adding clear alcohol, how you, you can really get some cool designs. And I would wait to do that till your epoxy is at least 20 or 30 minutes old so that those designs stay if that's what you like. So then this is basically our original without the little dots that I just put in with the alcohol. Look at this little piece right here, Kenny. Isn't that pretty? That little design. So guys, this is so easy. Easy, 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 easy. So this is A. And I can say A with the alcohol. <laughs> B is where our copper is with our, and then we added some green, and then we added, we went the next step and we granified it. And then C is uh, our middle where it's pretty much just the dark dyes with a tiny bit. I tell you what, if I wanted to recreate this look in the middle, I would probably do my whole countertop with the dyes and then I would pour the epoxy on the table and just chop my brush in it and then almost dry my brush off and very, very lightly uh, skip trial the top so that I'm barely bringing any color because that's what I did here is I, I really barely have any color there and I love that. All right, so what do y'all think? Y'all want me to do something else? I've got a little bit of green left in the cup. I have some copper left in the cup. Uh, and I have bronze. So, somebody tell me what to do. Or do I walk away, Rhonda? Y'all let me know. Let me know what to do. And until y'all decide and we start seeing some answers, all of these products, guys, are available on our website, rk3designs.com. 
We do same day shipping. We're getting a big order in uh, either tomorrow or Thursday. I know there's going to be people out there asking about the Ultimate Top Coat. I will have it uh, by the end of the week. They're already sold out uh, on Stone Coat's website. Um, I don't know exactly how many bottles I'm going to be getting. They're packaging it as fast as they can get it made. So I cannot promise you, but I ordered another 400 bottles today. Um, so hopefully that will be shipped out the first of next week. Or no, by the end of this week, it'll be shipped out and I'll have some more next week. So we are trying, guys, um, to get you guys the UTC as fast as we can. All right. Does anybody tell me what they want to do with this? They said put a vein. They said leave walk away. Put a vein. A green one. A green vein. Ooh. Sure it, which you already did. All right, let's see. If we did a green vein, let's see. All right, so first of all, if I lay a green vein down, I'm going to lay some bronze down first. And then we're going to kind of go in there. So we're going to come right here. And we're going to lay, we're going to lay a multicolor vein. How about that? We're just going to go across this whole bad boy. All right. And then we're going to do it again. And we're going to fracture and we're going to bring it out. How about that? All right, now let's add a little bit of the green. Okay. And then let's add just a tick of the copper because copper can really kind of take over. So we're going to add it very lightly. All right. I like that. Kind of drag my stick just to give it a little bit of a, some life here. we go. All right, let's take some black spray paint and add that in there. I'm going to use a stick. Just a little bit to dry it. All right. Oh, wow, that's pretty. I'm going to bring in some brown right here at the end added a little bit too much black oh yeah add a little more green now anytime you add epoxy to a vein as opposed to making a vein out of spray paint remember you're adding product to the surface so that vein is going to spread out. So be aware of that. That vein is not going to stay this size. This epoxy is trying to self-level, so that's why it's going to continue to spread out, as opposed to if I did my vein with spray paint, it's not going to spread out because I'm not adding any more epoxy. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here with my heat gun. Let's open up that vein just a little bit. I don't want to add a lot of heat. I'm coming straight over the top. I'm not trying to move that vein. I'm just trying to open it up so that my colors. Will really spread and open. Like I said, I'm over the very, very top. I'm not coming in from the side. Kind of go off here. Make it very soft. And 
There we go. What y'all think about that? That's pretty. Now, by laying your vein down after all of your background is about 30 minutes old, and at this point, it's about 40 minutes old because I actually mixed this epoxy up about 10 minutes before we started. By doing that and creating your background first and letting it set up, then adding your vein and very, very carefully using that heat gun, I'm not going to disturb any of my background. And that's what I was going for. I didn't want to mess up any of that background. So that's why I was really, really careful with my heat gun, not to be super aggressive when I came in and come over from just the top and heat it up just enough to make it move. Okay. All right, guys, that is that is so pretty. Now, I could come in here with a little bit of black, like right here where I, I really can't see my vein because I'm, it's copper on top of copper. I could come in here with a little bit of black and almost kind of outline that vein. Now, be really careful. This epoxy is still a little bit warm from using my heat gun. If you go into hot epoxy or warm epoxy with spray paint, instantly it's going to spread out. And you, if you're not expecting it, it can get away from you really quickly. So make sure that your epoxy is kind of cooled down a little bit before you start adding any more spray paint. All right, so that's pretty. That kind of, it kind of brought it in a little more where it's a little more distinct. I like that. You can see it also over here. It looks like it's a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to add just a little bit of black. Kind of bring that in. Okay, that's pretty. So let's try this. Let's take some isopropyl alcohol. Let's, mm, I don't have a cup. I'm going to just put it on my stick, see if I can do that. And I'm going to drag some isopropyl alcohol through the vein. See how I'm just dropping it down on there? And I'm going to let that alcohol kind of play with that vein just a little bit. Can you see that? That's a design on its own. Trying not to drip it anywhere else. That really opens up that vein and brings those colors in. But if you do too much alcohol, it's going to get very blurry, meaning it's going to just distort the whole vein. There. Oh, that's pretty. Come out, come show them right here. So I have a lot of product right here, a lot of spray paint, a lot of mica. So I'm going to drop a little bit of that alcohol right here in the middle and look at it. Very cool. I like that. There. Isn't that pretty? Woohoo! Yes. Pretty, 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 pretty. Whoever's idea it was to do the vein, who was it that said do the vein? Do we remember? There was, a couple. was there? That was a great choice. Great choice. Vamp was one of them. Vamp? 
Well, of course that was a good choice then. I know Vamp's got an eye for all this. All right. So what do y'all think about that? I like it. That's pretty. Okay. So, could you see you, yourself doing this on a countertop or maybe a table? I could see this. I could see this side right here. Well, any of actually on a big old heavy kitchen table where you really wanted some warmth in the room. That's beautiful. All right, let's do one more thing. I know I may still have, <laughs> I may catch this thing on fire here because I know I'm probably still have some alcohol, but I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna tilt it just a tad to see if I can get this, this uh, vein to get a little more organic looking and move just a little bit. Yeah, it's moving a little bit. All right. Well, guys, I love that. I think that is really, really pretty. So you, you did good. Y'all did good telling me to do that vein. All righty. Well, it's about that time, y'all. This was a fun, fun live. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope Kenny doesn't fall off backwards. He's sitting on a five gallon bucket on top of the table. All right, guys. So let me know what you think. What did you like the best? Do you like A, without the vein, which was just the mica powder, the bronze mica powder, B, which is the copper, or B with the copper and the green, or C, just a hint of the mica powder, or did you like when we chopped it, we fogged it with the black spray paint and we chopped it, and then we added drips onto the copper, and then we added the vein. Tell me what your favorite part of this whole little thing was. And then let me know. Alrighty guys, so I hope that I got your mind off for at least 50 minutes of what's going on in the world. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hi to all my friends out there. Hi to all our former students out there. Um, we are filling up our classes like crazy. Um, we already are starting to book classes into May, June, July. Um, and guys, I'm not gonna say anything right now because we're still in the process. We have a huge announcement of an event that's coming up pretty soon, okay? I'll give you a hint. No, I'll wait. No, no, I'll wait. Next week, I'll come back with some more information. But just know, we are kind of planning a really cool event. And I am so, so excited to be able to bring it to you guys. But we're in the planning stage, the infancy stage. I talked to Mike Quist last night about it and he uh, helped me to kind of put some stuff together. So I'm so excited um, to be able to announce that. Hopefully I can announce it next week. So anyway, guys, you have a fabulous week. Stay off the TV. Don't listen to politics. Don't listen to anything bad. Keep everything good, good vibes, uh, good things going into your mind. Stay creative. And I will see you next week. All right, guys. I love you all. Thank you for joining us. Kenny and I say see you next week. And let me know if you need anything, okay? Get in touch with me if you need anything. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye. Adios.